All right, so now we have scheduled all of our trips in the software. We have all of our background information around our drivers, our vehicles, our rates, all put into routing box. Now it's time to go ahead and get those trips assigned to vehicles. There are three major tools in routing box that are going to help you do that. The first one is the run builder uh, that we're looking at here. So the run builder is built really more for reoccurring type trips, trips that are happening over and over and you have them assigned to a, you know, a consistent route. Um, so here we have the, the run builder screen, which is going to give us a nice visual aid to help us put those routes together. When we click on a route, you'll see that I have my assigned route here over on the screen. I can see my stops in order um, and you'll see that there's no th three that's because three and four are at the same address so it's kind of hidden behind there but it kind of gives me a nice visual so i can see okay does this order make sense and if not then i can go ahead and i can adjust my times to make that happen now down at the bottom i have the other trips that are eligible to be assigned to this route based on the filters that i've set right now the filter for this is every day all day um, but it's set to be only trips coming to or from this address so this allows me if I have school trips or trips coming in and out of a dialysis facility or a methadone clinic I want to be looking for opportunities to multi-load those trips or to have a driver kind of moving in and out of that facility consistently this makes it very very easy for me to identify all the trips coming in or out of that address um, I can click and you'll see this blue appeared on my uh, route here this is actually showing me how the route would deviate. So what it's showing me is if I were to add this trip, the driver would, before they finish here, go off their route this way, come all the way down here to pick that person up, and then bring them back and they're dropping off at the same location. I may want to do that depending on timing and how it worked out. It looks like this is set for a 2 p.m. drop off about the same time as these folks. Um, so that does make sense in that regard. Um, and then also it's a, you know, 101 pickup. This one's the last pickup is 1145. So I do have time to get down there in time. Um, so this trip probably makes sense to add to this route. Now, if I had another route that was coming up from the south to the same facility, maybe not. And that's something that obviously you'll know what your designated routes are about when they're running to see if this makes the most sense. So I can go ahead and add that trip and you'll see it falls right into line here. My map immediately adjusts so I can see that driver's route still um, as it's been updated with the new trip information. I can also filter trips uh, by a few other things. So if I don't want to look at a specific location, for example, go ahead and save those changes. If I wanted to look at a, uh, something else, for example, here, I don't have any address. So it's not filtering out to a specific address. So you can see I have a lot more trips here. I probably want to filter this down a little bit to make it not so crazy. Um, so what I can do is use the filters here. Um, it looks like this is a wheelchair trip, so I'm going to go ahead and assign uh, the ambulant mode here to look for other wheelchair trips. And this is down in um, what we'd call, it's Chautauqua County here in uh, Western New York. So I can go ahead and assign the Chautauqua County filter, and now it's showing me all the other wheelchair trips in Chautauqua County to see if any of these might make sense in order to, uh, to add these to this route. It looks like we have a couple will calls here and then just a trip this afternoon. So this might not make a lot of sense. Maybe I wanna take a look and say, you know what? Let's look at the, the livery, the ambulatory trips as well uh, to see if maybe I can have this driver do something else in, around the same time. And it looks like actually it might make some sense for me to even multi-load an ambulatory passenger in with my wheelchair passenger here. Um, and I can adjust these times accordingly to have them both move from Randolph into Jamestown. Um, and then I can, looks like I could maybe, maybe I know when Pam's return generally is, maybe um, I can pick up Dwight a little bit early, depending on the times. I would know that obviously, um, since these are recurring trips, folks that, that travel with me often, uh, I might want to adjust the route and just have that driver stay right down in Chautauqua County, or maybe I'll bring him back to another nearby area um, and send another driver down for the afternoon run, or maybe send him back for the afternoon run. Either way, um, I've got a lot of options. It's giving me all the information I need as a scheduler to make very quick, decisive, and most importantly, the most accurate decisions. Making routing decisions, we find, is the most important thing that a... Uh, and any MT company can do in addition to their billing and scheduling functions simply because of all the costs associated with your drivers and with your vehicles. Let's go ahead and look at a second uh, tool. Now this one is, uh, is very, very similar. This is called visual dispatching. Uh, so visual dispatching is really the same concept as that run builder. Um, we have here, instead of routes, we have our drivers. So this is looking at the driver's day. Same concept with the map um, with the numbered pins. You see all the stops here as well. 
um, and you can sort that by um, all sorts of different uh, fields. We can f filter that by different fields. You have a lot of different options in terms of figuring out uh, exactly how this is going to lay out. And then same concept, I can click on a trip, it'll show me how the route deviates. And if I hit click the plus, that'll add the trip to that driver's route. Now here it's giving me a warning uh, where this is dri a driver is actually assigned to this vehicle. This is a livery trip uh, going to an ambulance vehicle. It's just warning me to make sure that that's intentional um, and that I don't want to make sure I keep that uh, wheelchair uh, vehicle eligible just for wheelchair trips and available to take those. So uh, now I've added that trip to my route and it's going to move on and show me what it looks like to add some of the next ones. Same thing, I can, I can do this by mode. I can filter it by zone to look at certain areas. Uh, again, really cool tools for pre-scheduling here, but we're looking at the driver's whole day instead of just an individual route, which might be a piece of their day, um, or his recurring trips. This is looking at everything and helping you put the trips in that make the most sense uh, with the driver's existing scheduled route. Now, in addition to the visual dispatch, we do have our standard dispatch dashboard here. And this is going to show me all of my trips sorted chronologically here. Um, and the great tool in here, obviously you have all the same filters. So if you wanna look at just the ambulant trips in an area, um, just all of your trips in one specific area, whatever it might be, you can filter this down as normal. But we can also get some suggestions as to what vehicles might make the most sense for specific trips. So here, uh, I've looked at my trip for Jimmy Garoppolo here. It looks like it's a wheelchair trip with a pickup at 7.30 p.m. at 5.65 Everett Road in Buffalo going down to Hamburg. Um, it looks like um, Ricky Bobby doesn't have any other trips um, and he's going to be dropping off at 530 at that same location so he can definitely be there on time and he can do that without any deadhead driving. Obviously it makes a lot of sense if I don't have any other trips for Ricky in between, I'm going to have Ricky Bobby stay on location there and go ahead and handle this trip as well. So a really nice tool to help you with figuring out which vehicle might make the most sense for a specific trip. Now, this also functions well for live dispatching, not only pre-routing the way we did there. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and bring this will call in for Josh Allen. So we're gonna go ahead and activate that will call for the current time. Um, we'll let the screen refresh here. We'll let Josh go into, uh, into queue um, at his uh, normal time here. And now we can run the same tool and look at what the drivers are currently doing. Now, the cool thing that I have here, obviously I have all the same tools available to me. Um, it's also warning me if there's another stop that that driver that might cause a conflict. Now, looking at this, um, this is a taxi trip, an ambulatory trip. So I want to try to uh, get this into a wheelchair van, but it looks like none of my wheelchair vans can be there um, until at least an hour after he requested his will call. Now, depending on your tolerance with your with your broker, that might be acceptable, um, but I might wanna to try to get there a little bit earlier. I can get one of my wheelchair vans there um, in, in really just about 15 minutes, so that's pretty quick. But this is telling me, you know what? Um, you've actually got a conflict with, uh, with this driver. You might wanna double check what's going on. I can also take a look and see how adding this trip would deviate their current route to see how a, uh, if a multi-load might make sense. So it looks like the driver's current route is going this way. What we would have to do is um, deviate off that route to go up here, pick up the customer, drop them off, and then get back on their route um, to come up here. So it's, it's not the most efficient, but um, you know, to make it uh, so I don't have to have that client waiting for too long, maybe that makes sense. So I can go back to the driver screen and actually take a look at Jen's trips to see if she's got another trip that would be a huge conflict for that. It looks like she's got a... Uh, a couple trips that are, are going to be um, conflicting in that their drop-offs are afterwards, um, but this might be a good multi-load opportunity. So I'm going to go ahead and, and jump on that and assign that trip to Jen and have her multi-load um, to take care of Josh and make sure that he's not waiting there for too long. Um, so great tool to help you identify Again, which vehicles make the most sense, both for will calls, for add-on trips, and even for those pre-scheduling uh, to find the one specific vehicle that makes the most sense for that individual trip based on your top priorities. Is it when you arrive? Is it efficiency? It's most likely a combination of both. We'll present your dispatcher with all of the information they need to be able to make that decision. Now let's take a look at some of the tracking options and tools that the dispatcher will have. Uh, so we're gonna take a look at our GPS tracker here. Um, and you know, obviously we don't have any vehicles out on the road, but we have one here so you can kind of see how this works in a, at a high level. Uh, we recommend popping this out to a second screen. So having you know, the tracker on one screen, having your dispatch tool that you're using 
on another screen. Here we have our one vehicle. You'll see this is uh, overlaid onto Google traffic. So you can see the different colors that's indicating how much traffic there is um, at that specific place here. It looks like we're doing pretty well uh, here in Western New York. Now, when I hover over this vehicle, it's going to give me who the driver is, what their assignment is, so what time their shift is ending, if I'm programming that to routing box, where they're headed, and about when we expect them to arrive and complete their uh, current task. So it makes it very, very easy for me as a dispatcher to see exactly what's going on with a vehicle, um, and then the, uh, the status will show also how many people are on board. Um, these vehicles are color-coded, so you'll see down in the right here we have the key. Oh, the green is unoccupied, meaning there's nothing going on. That vehicle is totally free. Yellow has a trip dispatched to it, but it's not currently performing any trips. An orange vehicle is honored to pick up, and a red vehicle is loaded with a client on board. So this allows us to very easily get all the information we need about what a driver is doing, what's going on, how many people are on board, how, long, how old this GPS data is with the last ping there, uh, and really kind of understand what's going on with those vehicles on a visual map, uh, just to give the dispatcher one more tool to make sure they're making really, really good decisions to maximize your efficiency and also your on-time performance uh, so you can make sure that you are as profitable as possible and you have the happiest customers as, as you possibly can. That's obviously going to help you make more money too. Let's move into some of the GPS history tools that are available in Routing Box. We're going to go ahead and close this out and go back over here and we'll go to the tracker history first. Um, this is a very straightforward uh, tool that is essentially just going to show you all of a driver stops um, throughout a specific day. I'm sorry, I clicked the wrong driver there. So here we have all of John stops. Now for me, I'm just going to have a login here. Um, but what you'll see is a line on the map showing us all the stops the driver makes along with all the individual uh, pings that happened throughout the day when they made status updates. So they can see exactly where they were when they marked a trip of out, arrived at pickup, arrived at drop off, where they logged in from, where they captured signatures from. All that information is right here on the tracker history report. So if you need to see exactly what happened for a specific vehicle for a specific day, uh, this will go ahead and break that down for you. Now we also have the tracker audit report. Now, what this does is a little bit different. Um, it's going to go ahead and allow you to generate a report based on a distance tolerance. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, set the trip at, uh, set the tolerance at 100 feet. I'm going to look at all the status updates that happened for a specific day um, with uh, that where the pickup or drop off that was marked on the tablet occurred at least 100 feet away from the actual pickup or drop off location that was scheduled. So here I have this address um, in Randolph that was a mere 261,000 feet away uh, when we marked that. Now, obviously, this is done from our office, so that's why we're, we're so far away here. But um, this will give you an idea of if someone's maybe misusing the application. Um, and you, more importantly, you'll be able to prove um, to an account, you can generate this port, report by account, or to, you know, in the case of an audit, um, that you are on site, you can make sure that the drivers are using the app properly and capturing the data properly so that you can prove that you are on site if that should happen. Um, if you want to research this further, we have some tools here that will help you do that. Um, if you click on the map icon here, um, it's going to show you where the ping happened versus where the uh, pickup and drop off were scheduled. So you can see kind of, uh, you know, we pinged up here, pickup and drop off. Happened. We're supposed to be way down here. This is where our office is. This is where the trips were scheduled. Now we can also click on this icon and that will actually immediately pull up the tracker history report that I showed you a second ago with the map. Um, it's going to immediately pull that up and show you that report for that driver for that day. So again, you see all these pings here right around our office, um, but you get the, the idea of what this does. It's going to be able to give you the opportunity to go back and look at the driver's uh, route for the day and see, okay, you know what, they went right by the pickup address. It was probably an honest mistake. They probably just forgot to mark that they arrived at pickup. Um, or you can see, you know what, that driver made all of their updates from the same place throughout the day. Something might be going on here where, where something's wrong. I've got to look into it and get this situation fixed. So some awesome tools for pre-scheduling, for live dispatching, for recurring routes, uh, all that information here in Routing Box to help you manage your business and manage your trips.